Hello and welcome to an open source live code hangout where today we will be working on the Western Friend website. I'm going to look in our issue queue for some kind of top priorities. There was one I think relating to pagination, which somehow didn't get displayed on our project. So I assign myself to this. It's a bug. It's either not working or it hasn't been implemented. I think it might have been an oversight, but I don't know yet. I think the original plan perhaps was to display all the items and then add pagination post launch. I don't know. I don't know. That wouldn't really make sense because the search page could display a lot of results. And it makes me curious, how many other issues do we have in our backlog that aren't assigned to a project? Let's see if there's a way I can negate filters. Feature request. Uh, it's been archived. No project. Let's see. Okay. Looks about right. Yeah. Okay, let's do a small amount of backlog grooming here. There we go. And actually, then I can add them all at once. That should work. There it goes. So we're using this new GitHub projects interface, relatively new, and under continual development. Uh, at first I was hesitant to use it. It seemed kind of half-baked, um, sometimes awkward, it was difficult to synchronize the issues. I think they've done a lot of improvements on this. So let's see, it's pretty, Nice, um, you know, that it allows custom fields, sorting. Um, it would be nice if you can sort by multiple. I have a subsort by priority and size is a very common one. Uh, but you can also use these. Uh, it's another view configuration. You have configurable fields. You can group items. So here we've got iteration grouping and then no iteration sort now this would be nice where i could have if i could have a sub sort hold alt to select a secondary sort so i can wow that is cool alt would be i would say size for the secondary support sort yeah uh the key and this is interesting they don't have to be alphabetical but uh let's see how that comes out medium small medium and large that looks good so it kind of lets me do a bit of triage. If there's something really high priority, you know, we want to get to those first. Uh, if we have a bunch of medium priority things, how do I choose? Well, perhaps I can put out the small fires or do the small work efforts first. <clears throat> wow, so that's nice, that's a nice enhancement. I also learned you can copy and paste. So when we want to, or select multiple fields and it's like a spreadsheet so you can apply content um, like label sets to multiple fields simultaneously. So for example, I can just copy this and paste it here. <laughs> copy and paste this one. That's for sign to Mary. Uh, it's non-trivial. This is not a good first issue. I'm going to paste this in and remove the good first issue. But help help would be appreciated. So I'm going to label all of these with help one in. <clears throat> hmm. This is an enhancement though. In any case, uh, the main goal here is that we have everything prioritized. So it looks like those new issues I added don't have priority. And the one problem is, is uh, if I change the priority here, let me, let's see, 
edit the title. These, this metadata here is a bit verbose. Uh, whoops, that's the button I'm looking for. When I change the priority here, mm, let's say low, it jumps it. If I had changed it to medium or high, it would jump the screen all the way up here. So I understand that that's so you don't lose sight of the change you just made. That makes sense from UX perspective, I guess. Uh, the problem is if I'm going through and bulk applying these, I have a different view set up for that basically. Search pagination not displaying. So that's what I'm gonna work on now, high priority. Search highlighting suffix, low, extra, extra section. Basically, if it's not a bug um, at this point, I'm going to give them all equal priority of low. Um, or a significant user experience enhancement. These are all stylistic and clean up. That could be a bug. This is style. Those are nice to have doc strings. Those are nice to have also. This is no longer relevant. So we won't really do that. Okay, so a little bit of backlog grooming. Nonetheless, I think it's the right time for us to move over to using this um, this GitHub projects is getting better. I won't go through on stream and uh, estimate these. So let's go ahead and take this search pagination into the current iteration. Since it's a bug, I'll refresh my IT and then we'll get into the code. Just 10 minutes of backlog grooming to start the session. All right, so we have a search page on the website. If I search for something here, or Quaker, for example, we get some results. And I believe that being a Quaker website, there should be probably more results than this. And in order to access those, I think there's a missing paginator here. So. I'm going to take this opportunity to. I'll take these all of these search and um, iteration. The, sorry, the, um, the pagination related ones into the current sprint. That's actually not trivial. Never mind that one. But we'll we'll take a look at our pagination widget. See what code we can share and what we can't. I think what we're going to do is create a shared pagination template. So a component that renders the HTML, but have to have duplicate pagination logic to construct the paginator each place we need pagination because of some um, warnings I'm getting in the console recently. So first let's search for pagination, paginator. So looks like we have events, magazine, events and magazine, and nothing in, in the, um, nothing in the search module for some reason. Oh, oops, that's actually not what I wanted to do. So this looks good. And, um, As long as we're passing a paginator into the template context, I think my first idea of having a shared template component will will work. That way at least our pagination is consistent. So in the advanced page, here we go. You can see we've got this paginator and it's doing its logic here. And it's keeping track of the page number. So since this is in the events index page, this markup. Other places in the site, like the library index, that define their own pagination might be inconsistent. And so we kind of end up with a bit of a mess. And it can be confusing for users. And I'll be right back. Okay, so that said, I will take one of these and create a nice template out of it, I'm pretty sure. We have pagination on the deep index page as well. 
memorials all these are using pagination i have this pagination helper that is supposed to take one step in the direction of having a shared pagination module but i'm getting console errors about sending an unsorted query set to a paginator i think that the for some reason the type hinting can't track whether or not the query set's been sorted when i pass it into the function it loses the thread so i don't think i'm going to be able to share the logic unfortunately so it won't be truly a, a component but let's go to the search real quick and just see what the search view is doing so if we've got a query get the results and paginate them They should be getting sent to the template then. Interesting. So start the development database. At this point, I'm going to un, uh, unassign Raj and assign myself. It's been a little bit. Okay, so if I search for something, test. We have some items, but no pagination. So let me double check. We have our search block here. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, this is right here. So we're just displaying each result and we're actually... display one item per page it is it is paginating but the interface has changed okay so this is where I think the common paginating widget and I think that I changed the name and that's about it now let's see for result no page strange So what we'll do is create in our core templates paginator. And we'll go to the library, which has the most, I would say comprehensive paginator. So if I go to the other content media library, we have this really nice paginator here. It works, it's been tested, got some weirdness, because of the wrapping, I should put a non-breaking space there. But I can fix that in this pull request. And we'll grab this markup. So the library, templates, library index page, and it's this paginator. So first we see if there's an item and it's gonna iterate over those. So this is a paginator. I can just call it if paginator, for example. But what we're gonna then do is, so first we display the items, then we render the pagination it's taking to consideration aria labels but make it generic so it's this whole if paginated items where is this ending here and what we'll do we should be able to then load that include that in say paginated items in our library item. Current query string is current query string. Now to avoid confusing myself, I need to just close the live server. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so how do I include? I've got the current 
the following template partial in Django, yada, yada, yada. I'd like to include that template in another template language, a template and pass the context variables, paginated items and current query string. So it is include if the paginated items and current query string variables are available in the context of the template where you are defining, including pagination, they will automatically be available. Okay, that's a bit tricky. It is implicit. Is there a way to explicitly? So is there a way to explicitly provide those variables such as an alternative to include or the, uh, to the end include tag or passing them as arguments to the include statement? You can explicitly provide context variables to an included template in Django while the include tag automatically has access to the current context. You can also pass specific variables to the template being included. This is by using the with keyboard alongside the include tag. Yeah, I think that this implicit context is going to be confusing, but if I use with, then we'll be good to go. There we are, and we have with, and the paginator works. And the key is, now if I select an audience, for example, I got uh, no pagination there, audience one. Let's clear that. Let's see if there's one I can do. A lot of them. Well, the one with the in the title. There we go. So we have this query string up here. Now it should be passed along when I go to the pagination. Page four contains the. So that's that's working. That worked. Now we have a common template with explicit arguments. Current query string is only used on this page, uh, but mm, will probably be useful on the search page as well to preserve the search uh, term across the pages. I think. Let's find out. Let's see, can I fix this non-breaking space thing? So now we have one template, so I fix it in one place, it fixes it everywhere. Nice. Oh, wait. I think the non-breaking non -breaking space should go here. That looks good. Yeah, so it's all, it's a little bit cleaner that way. It's not perfect. These could actually be wider, it looks like, on this breakpoint. But let's continue. I'm focusing only on pagination here. So now we've got a unified paginator. Now I'm not going to commit that, but this get paginated item here. Let me see if I can clear out the console and run this. This has been complaining. Uh, so we've got the wagtail snippets thing that we worked on in the last session. But maybe this get paginated items is also okay if I can share this function. Because this wraps all my pagination logic in a single place. That's again, it's maintain, maintain once. If I fix something in one place, it fixes it everywhere. So how did, how did I get this error? I think it's when I run the tests. Somewhere along in the test, it'll have a notice that comes up. It's a bit annoying. I could probably live with it though. If I could suppress it, that would be even better. I would like to have a single unified get paginated items function. It just takes a query set. Perhaps I can, um, perhaps there's like a sorted query set. Yeah, it's this error here. And I've got a feeling test, oh no. The warning you're seeing, unordered object list warning, is Django's way of telling you that you're trying to paginate a query set that hasn't been explicitly ordered. This can lead to inconsistent pagination results because the order of records in an unordered query set is not guaranteed to be consistent across database queries. To address this, you should explicitly define an order for your query set before passing it to the paginator. This is by done by using the order by method on your query set. Order by method allows you to specify the field or fields that you want to order your query set. Yeah, so maybe it is already on the query set in most cases, just in the test case here, whatever's happening, we're not using the paginator correctly. Oh yeah, and the test is, is they're failing because I'm, I, I changed the pad number of items per page. Okay, but that's not a big deal. An order object list, pagination may yield, yes. Cows models users. So this query set might have a property on there that says whether it's sorted. Hey, thanks, Ann Capster. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? 
Thanks for the emoji bomb. <laughs> Subscribe. All right, let's see where we're using this. Perhaps I can find this get paginated items. Uh, we're mocking it here. Okay, six to go. What is it? Six, uh, I don't, a round number of subscribers or something? <laughs> I haven't been keeping track. But thanks for, <laughs> for pushing it forward. Oh, yeah, wow. I forgot I had set a goal of 150, thanks. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, so I think this is the problem. If I just, yeah, I'm just grabbing the user objects. O order by might <laughs> might fix the problem there uh, for all of the. Okay, cool. What'd you have for dinner? It's, oh, it's dinner time in your, where you're located. It's past dinner time here. It's past my bedtime, actually, but I couldn't. Uh, I slept during the day. I had a problem. Uh, I was sleep deprived. All right, so self users are now paginated i think that'll get rid of this particular error okay brazil very cool yeah how's the uh, weather there it's summertime there probably it's always like summertime there i don't know <laughs> amazonia okay is that uh that's in uh in central brazil or where's that located yeah 5 30 okay <clears throat> 1730 so yeah so if i stream it this time then <laughs> people in the americas can hang out Okay, let's rerun just this test here. So we got the test is in pagination tests. Keep DB um, pagination tests. Yes, that got rid of the error. Okay, so that was it. Just explicit order by. Well, this is great. I'm glad that I can actually have this common uh, pagination helper class. And this was just a guess. I was seeing if that was even possible. So query sets uh, will indicate if they are uh, sorted or not. Very cool. Let me just f replenish my tea. I'll be right back. Okay, Wisconsin, yeah, that's the same time zone, but like pretty far away. <laughs> a whole continent away, man. It's a long trip. That's I'm in Finland, and uh, I'm originally from Kansas. It's probably as far from Brazil to Wisconsin as it is from Finland to Kansas. Okay, so now that I've got this um, in good shape, where I know that I can use uh, my paginator HTML, that worked, and... I have a pagination helper here in pagination helpers. So actually, since I've got pagination, which I completely forgot about, I'm going to move my pagination template there or paginator template and continue with this pull request pagination templates paginator. Let's see the library item sh uh, run the server library page should still work. We've got the paginator there. Ooh, template does not exist. Okay, so either template. The template is in the right location. Uh, maybe the, I did just start the server again, so it should pick up changes to the file system. Possibly. Does Django deal with authentication or authorization? Single sign on, for example. Yes, it does. By default, Django includes authentication with group based access control for authorization um, and then for single sign-on uh, there are really good modules like Django all auth but I'll just show you the user authentication it's built into the framework it does a lot of work for you that's the reason I'm using Django is the heavy lifting it does for me that I don't even know I need until I need it then it's already there <clears throat> like storing you know passwords password hashing and uh, security around that so you have basic permission system you can add people to groups It'll handle the security of passwords uh, and generating forms, but you can swap it out. And it has some things about um, security that are bonuses, like checking the strength of passwords, uh, keeping people from brute forcing, and then OAuth for, you mentioned single sign-on, even down to row level or object level permissions. So it's baked in. Django product for testing. My background is in Next.js. Yeah, you'll be really surprised at the difference of the developer experience when you use a framework like Django versus Next.js about like what it includes, what the word framework means in the context of Django and the Python ecosystem. It's a day and night difference. It's an immense difference. And the phrase that we use is called batteries included, that it just has like so many things that you don't even realize you need until you do and then they're already there and there's conventions and documentation to describe how they work and if you don't need them then they won't get in your way because you just don't import it you don't use that part if you don't need template rendering yeah if you're using react 
server-side components, then uh, you can skip the template language. But I really recommend even just going all in on the template Django template language, and there's a lot of value in that as well. Yeah, so it would be cool to take the, what you learned from Python and see if you can find an equivalent in the JavaScript world. The closest I've found is Nest, but even it, compa it pales in comparison to Django. It has some nice features built in, but and it's trying to be uh, a full-fledged framework, um, but it's still really low level. Yeah, I don't have a particular preference aside from I'm getting out of the JavaScript ecosystem as much as I can. Uh, we did build a product with um, Meteor.js that ran for several years in production and it was a good experience overall. We got the product built and launched in, in people's hands and it had an impact on people's lives. But the maintenance it turned out uh, and some of the design decisions that they made with tying Meteor.js to MongoDB, for example, and going this route of like ignoring the fact that we need schemas and data migrations and relationships and things like that typically uh, in these types of applications was I think really a big mistake and led me back to Django. Yeah, let me know if you're uh, exploring it a bit. If I can check out any open source projects you're working on. If you'd like to um, get your feet wet with Django, I do have several tasks you can try. You know, this project is open source, for example, this Western Friend project. And we've got several uh, mini tasks, actually. Let me save this view real quick. That are flagged for uh, good first issues. This is one that we're really focusing on. So if I just show you the repo, for example, WF website, we just launched this website, but I also have a couple of other Django projects I'm working on. And there's a lot of, I do the same sort of um, stewardship. When I have an open source project, I label a bunch of them with good first issues. And these are things that I think are kind of small tasks that let you get uh, some experience contributing to an open source project. Yeah. And some of them are like really small or some of them might even already be done. Like these ones that start with like, that are print, start with parentheses, PYL, EL, FLK, Flake, Python. These are kind of style and lint level changes that would just see, let you see, here's how to run a project. Here's how to change the code and, com you know, commit those changes to an open source repo uh, without much like getting into the internals of how the project works even. And these came from a static analysis tool we were using called Deep Source. Some of these are already resolved, but I can't remember which, so I need to close some of these. Adding a doc string to a function. Uh, by the way, do you use like ChatGPT or anything like that? What's your experience with those kind of a code uh, assistant tools like uh, this one or um, GitHub Copilot, which I'm gonna be using, I'm pretty sure, during this session. Okay, so we've got our helper. Perplexity and find, okay. AI search engine and pair program are nice. Excellent, and do they embed directly in your IDE? Claude to or GPT backend. Hey, that's cool. Nice. What's the pricing? Perplexity is more general. I think I'd heard of this. It's like a knowledge search. It, I think that's hence the um, name and somebody was describing it as using it like a for summarization uh, then they started building knowledge graphs and they were like finding that perplexity came up really short and was providing really generic responses compared to their knowledge graph or something like that i was watching some youtube video on that future pdf for ai training stuff thanks these are great the largest ai tools and software directory any like, uh, what's the organization behind it? I was looking for the footnotes, favorites, deals, advertise, resources, subscribe. Day and night mode, nice. Yeah, I don't even know what I would use. We're, we're thinking about making this open source game, like an educational adventure game. So one of them was we were like, hey, how can we make consistent characters and game art? Yeah, this is the one we settled on. We're like, Leonardo AI. We are using, uh, oh shoot, I keep forgetting the name of it. Mid Journey, it's really good. Uh, but the interface for Mid Journey is Discord, and it's like, ah, uh, you know, that's like using a command line tool. It's like, okay, it's powerful, but give me something that's more direct manipulation and has, you know, tells me what the affordances are, tells me what I can do with the tool. Uh, not let, not have me like figure out, you know, esoteric 
fl flags and uh, you know watch YouTube videos about like what particular just all these weird this weird terminology I have to like dig up from YouTube tutorials and stuff. Leonardo kind of gives you a really good user interface there. So I think that's the one I would be, I would be, bet on Leonardo AI if I were to say you know who will be successful in in the upcoming five ten years and and companies who follow that you know this is nice it's got a, a almost like an airline pilot user interface Leonardo is a bit more refined the chat interface for ChatGPT though is really good that lets you do natural language but then when you start to add feature flags into these natural language statements that's where the user experience breaks down but yeah Futurepedia this is really great thanks for showing me that. And there's a huge, a uh, lot of innovation in this space. Yeah. Okay. Well, Python machine learning. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a bit. Of, do you like data visualization by by any chance? I'll put these in my back of my mind, but I don't know if I'll bookmark them or I don't really use bookmarks. Yeah. I pour paper. Yeah. Well, that's easy to do. That that's a really big habit I have struggled with for many years. In fact, it took me over ten years to go from delivering Chinese food and reading about Python in between deliveries to uh, actually writing my first application, a web application, and then 10 more years to like be able to have launched a couple projects and work now full time as a software engineer. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> Didn't realize that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It was, I was kind of, it was cool. I've always, uh, I liked Python. I like Monty Python. I think that's what drew me to the language and then heard good things about it being kind of friendly to easy to learn. So I just was reading Python for dummies sitting at, at this sh table in Overland Park, Kansas in between Chinese deliveries and the uh, owner let me do that. And sometimes I would help with other things like random, <laughs> random tasks, but they were actually nice enough to just let me read for a while. <laughs> But I, it, I didn't do anything with it. I just procrastinated like big time. I was starting to grok it, but in order to really understand, you have to do it. And so that's why it took me another 10 years. And then Meteor.js came out and that actually catalyzed my interest again. And I just started building with Meteor.js. And that's when it, things really accelerated when I started building. So yeah, do you have any ideas? Yeah, starting is really tough, isn't it? There's a lot of inertia and fear and, you know, self-doubt and those kind of things that's why it's good to start small and i'm trying to help some other people uh here in my neighborhood you know get started out as well but maybe that they'll have a, a, <laughs> a quicker uh ramp up time tutorial huh? yeah and you can just watch another youtube video and another one and another and not really do anything that's interesting i, I probably have heard that phrase tutorial help huh? yes okay so then what was the problem here i think i didn't register this app properly with my settings maybe that's the problem I don't know why. It's just a regular Python module, and I think Django is not picking it up as a source of uh, Django app, as a Django app. So that would be under pagination. Let me just double check. PayPal. That's the case. Pagination, is it? Yes. So now if I save, that should be all that's needed for this template to be found. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Automa. Oh, I see. Yeah, I learned about Twitch. So LMAO is a uh, filtered term. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so what are you going to build? Whoops. What do you think you'd like to build? Uh, I do. I have done a lot of work with data, a little bit of work uh, professionally with machine learning, mostly with data pipelines and data visualization. And I'm going to be working on this stream, this channel, uh, with some data visualization projects coming up in the next like over the next it's going to be i'll start soon and it's going to be a long project like at least one year the project i'm working on now we've been developing for five years and we just launched it ton of tools to learn yeah that that's another thing you get this paralysis because you have so much it can feel like everything pressing down on you is like where do i even start Django is a really good start the reason is you get right to the heart of your your data model and you're working with requests and responses. Yeah, Python is great, and what you learn is transferable. And in fact, if you go on as a JavaScript engineer, you will look for Pythonic experience in the JavaScript ecosystem, and maybe will help catalyze that. All right, so next paginator. Use unified pagination. So that's working. That's done. Search, and essentially, uh, 
here's where I need to pass the query string. I can fix that again. The search should work. Yeah, that's a good, that's an interesting point. Wish we could have more time. Yeah, but we don't. And so we have to learn time management. And that's something I've struggled with like super through my whole life, time management. And I get distracted. I have AD, I was diagnosed with ADHD. I think it's now just ADD. I don't feel so hyper, hyperactive, but uh, very distractible. Or if I'm really interested in something, I can be like zone, in the zone on that thing. I get that with music and with code sometimes. But in order to show up and like start the thing, that's where I bounce around and I have to like almost just have a routine like this live coding. I just say, okay, after work on Mondays uh, and every other weekend, I'm gonna sit down and, and do live code. So I block that space. And then the next big challenge is like, what do I do during that space? So once you've got the ball rolling, you start a small project, then there's lots to do. I have 55 things that need done. So choosing something actually is, well, it's still a bit tricky, but that's when I use prioritization. And that's where we've been doing this backlog grooming and things like that. So this is something I've just learned over years and practiced this quite a lot um, now professionally because we have to prioritize, we have to manage work that comes to us. So we've got, you know, like 80 items. How do I choose the next one? Well, we use prioritization, t-shirt sizes, small, medium, large size, and high, medium, low priority. And that's sort of like an Eisenhower matrix in a way, it's, but urgency and priority would be the Eisenhower matrix. Yeah, and I just learned today that you can dual sort on, on GitHub issues. So you could even set up like a personal repository for like your own life stuff. Yeah, or you know, use something like, like a Notion or something, of course, and just apply the same methodology. You know, use t-shirt sizes for the, how big of a thing it looks. If it's a large or an extra large t-shirt size, you might be able to break it down into smaller chunks and prioritize and then categorize things. Just, this is what I do for work. This is what I do for school. This is what I do for, or per personal studying or my hobby, or if I want to make a musical album, you have categories of projects. Obsidian, yeah, I was checking that out too. And it's got the uh, Obsidian I, w I like because you can sort of synchronize it with a Git backend if you, if you want. So all your notes can live on GitHub. Yeah, that one I have checked out a bit. Uh, one thing I like about Notion is the real-time collaboration because I'm sharing this with people. And uh, also I like the Notion AI. Having a large language model inside of my Notion actually has saved me, has helped me out quite a lot because I use it to draft articles and things like that. And I'll, I'll use like uh, ChatGPT on the body of the article, but ChatGPT's writing style is sometimes weird. So I'll use then, um, Notion uses Cl uh, Claude, Anthropic Claude, and it has, I can tell it to simplify or make the writing more straightforward and things like that. Uh, it's not perfect, but yeah, Obsidian's huge. And they're probably looking at Obsidian Uh, I or something like that, right? Tele telepathy. I like this knowledge graph. This is something I've been really interested in lately is your, your knowledge graph, but building uh, not just what links to what, but having an ontology of like particular types of links between entities like the um, wiki, wiki data initiative. Canvas is pretty cool. And the plugins, there's so probably already a GPT plugin for it, I bet. Synchronization is cool. Do they have real time? And I wish their publishing was a bit cheaper. It's like, oh, eight per month. Okay, that's not so bad actually. But if I want to publish multiple sites with the same database, with my uh, Notion, I have multiple shares. I share with multiple people. Up to four gig, theme and domain. So this would be a single site. No, not bad though. Yeah, I agree. I really like Obsidian. I haven't given it as much uh, attention. You have to make your own vault and then you can publish it. How, can you publish it like on GitHub pages or something? Or make my own vault, selective sync, and collaboration is there. If I wanted a shared vault. And I oh, yeah, 10 bucks a month. And does each person have to pay? Canvas is cool sounding. I like that. I like these nonlinear brain graphs and the concept maps that you can do. 
Yeah, pretty cool. And I like that it's open source. Open source on GitHub. These parts of it are. Here's Mastodon. Plugins, create your own plugins, or use the plugins from the community. There's a lot of integrations. Yeah, and I bet, um, man, it's under crazy active development. Yeah, these are things that Notion doesn't do. But in terms of like collaborating with other people, uh, I'm gonna kind of stick with Notion for that. For like our, our little startup business, we're gonna use Notion. We've already got an agreement. But for my own personal notes, I might just go back to Obsidian. I don't know. I'm paying 20 a month right now for a personal Notion with um, Notion AI. And uh, the real-time collaboration in Notion is actually really cool because I can be opening it up on my screen and have somebody else opening the same document and we're like editing stuff and synchronizing. That's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, get help, it's a great way to organize uh, your life and your knowledge. And what kind of widgets does it have? That's a cool um, thing about Notion and probably Obsidian, you know, they're the uh, um, block-based editing interface. You know, you got some checklist here. There's plugins probably. Uh, I do like the links. Now, Notion doesn't do this. This is this is totally cool. Uh, it doesn't really show me the blocks. Uh, plugins. AI. Let me just see this. AI. AI. I'll play. Chatbot or GPT. Prompt engineering research. Copilot. Yeah, I'm sure there's something. Yeah, lots of these. All right. Yeah, that Notion doesn't do unless they open. Maybe they have a marketplace, a Notion marketplace or something. 33 gigs of notes and code. You're putting code in there too. I mean, this is the thing. I want to synchronize my stuff on GitHub. And I was really trying. I landed on, uh, let's see, Flutter Friends. What's it called? Quartro. On Quarto for certain kinds of projects where I, I want to synchronize on GitHub. Boy, this is bright. Can I turn that off? Uh, it's essentially a publishing platform. So it's not exactly the same as what we're, we're using for um, Obsidian and Notion for, but you can publish books and websites, things like that, and write it in. The editing experience is important. Uh, so Notion has an excellent editing experience. Um, Obsidian seems pretty good. User interface looks pretty nice. Uh, not writing Markdown is a plus, uh, but you still have to kind of do that. Quarto is though Markdown style. And so it's a bit more for technical people. But it lets me have a repo and publish books and have them open source and publicly available. And I can still use generative AI. I just have to kind of copy and paste. Uh, it's all right. So this one I, I like when I'm trying to publish stuff so other people can check it out, try the code and things like that. So different. this is a different use case, the personal notes. Uh, I wrote a book. Everybody, I think it was a player for everybody. Yeah. And repositories. Oh yeah, Dart for everyone, of course. Duh. Uh, this is written, first draft published just recently with Quarto. Pretty good and uh, written primarily with GPT. But the general idea is kind of helping people learn to program. And so I want something that I can write almost as fast as I can think and publish in a nice form. Hack tricks. Yeah, let's see. So uh, Obsidian, because the GitHub thing is a really important thing for me. And of course I can just use Git. It's just a bunch of markdown files. <laughs> but uh, like, I don't want to think about that. Like with Notion, I just write and it's synchronized. It's kind of, okay, so this is every X minute sync. Well, that's cool though. Yeah, so that's cool. Yeah, so I'll, I'll give Obsidian another thought and uh, see how I can balance it when I have too many tools, but just enough. All right, so we're, I think we're here and we're done. So, so, done with the view pie. So now I just need to, everywhere I was using paginator, use our shared paginator. Every time I'm generating paginated items, use our shared paginator and we're good to go. So this will take a bit of focus. So how to tackle it? Well, first we will, uh, I guess I will open up the pagin, uh, see, where did I use it? Library, yellow templates. So this is my, how I do it right here. Got to accomplish some labs here. All right. Yep. Thanks. Hope to see you around and let me uh, know what you're thinking of Django. And if you want to contribute to some projects, I have some great tasks that I can get you started with. Thanks for stopping by and subscribing. Okay. I'll mention you somewhere. Just, uh,
Let me see if I can. Oh, thanks. Yeah. See you around. You have to be in like the group or something. Well, darn. Ah, okay. Apparently not the right, right one. It's pretty tricky. Zero days, four minutes. Zero XR for it. Zero XRH. Let's just try zero XRH. Could be zero XRH. The zero days four minutes thing, I think might have been from something else. Well then, back to, to the task at hand. Oh, okay, okay, four, zero days, four minutes, one nanosecond. There we go. Or what's the, oh yeah, there we go, got it. Security researcher. Yeah, if you wanna check out the security of this website, that would be cool too. <laughs> Snort social, okay, very cool. Security researcher, full stack developer, cyberpunk enthusiast. Wow, very cool. Profile picture too. Wow. Snort social. Is this Mastodon? Interesting. <laughs> Local host. Snort's another project. Oh, okay. So it's an alternative. Is it a federated federated alternative to watch my whoosums? I've got. I finally got a blue sky account. Just before I've got one on Hacker News, like very randomly in a random thread about SQL Light, and then uh, the same week, my uh, invitation was sent from like I had applied months before to get a Blue Sky one. But I'm also on like a Mastodon network. Okay, cool. Well, see you around. I don't want to keep you d d delayed here. Oh, okay. They're all private. Some cool stuff there. Yeah, Hacker Roadmap. Cool. Yep, have a great day. Nice. Ah, I bet information gathering tools. Very cool. I don't know if I want to be a, a hacker though. I am a hacker, but I'm building my own stuff. Okay, here it is. So we're going to include the paginator, but I have to be a little bit careful here. Make sure that I use events for the paginated items. And in this case, we don't need, so that won't exist. Oh, damn it. Okay, now for our, our model, paginated events. Uh, I'm gonna do this in a methodical order. So I wanna do both, just every module I change, I wanna do both changes at once. Coming events page. So in order to do this, I'm gonna create two separate tabs. One is the right way to do it, where we have made the changes in our library, actually the library index page. And the other is this is our reference, and we're using pagination. Get paginated items. So we get the query set with an order by, the items for page, and the current page number. That needs, uh, okay, this is interesting. I'm parsing it to a integer later well that works so copy that default value one and essentially paginated events all this error handling is done inside get paginated items items per page i mean it's a bit redundant but okay i'll have this placeholder variable so i don't think this oh there it is it's already there and then import. Yeah, less is more. Less error prone. So now if we go here to event, we'll add a news item. I need to make, um, 
database fixture to save myself some time here, but okay, I don't have them. I haven't invested in it. Oh, okay, new, new topics. Add child page, this should be a news item, yeah. And then we'll paginate, there's the news items, and we'll paginate it uh, one item per page for right now. All right, so news is not working. So the events is working. Paginated items is working. Ah, um, I'm in the wrong module. Module, gosh, it's a bit late. Here we go. All right, so that's events items needs to be fixed. I think it's what that's, that's where, okay. So for event and events items, right? Let me see how I did it on the library. Okay, page. Uh, for library item and page, okay. No Western events, okay, there's something. And we'll just go ahead and create a new event. New event, event one, starts today. Default time zone, publish. Event two, starts tomorrow, publish. View live, okay, we got events, events two. And pagination is working. First, previous, yes. Now the events page needs some improvements. And there will be some aesthetic changes we'll need to make, but I'm not gonna go to, uh, I think then this, the only thing is it's got this weird wrapper. Uh, here, margin start, or it doesn't need anything. That was it, all right. So events is done. We're, we've got the shared code in events. Search is using paginated, get paginated items and, okay, not the template. So here we go. Paginated search results. And I don't know if we need the query string. I'll look at that. Try it without their, without the query string. I think because the, I think we're gonna need the query string. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm URL encoding it here because it can allow, uh, I don't know if I was trying to allow or prevent like SQL injection and those types of attacks. When I have this search query in the library view, which is essentially attached to the model, library index, page model, I get the query and I use it directly. All right, so in the search, I think I think Django sanitizes this for me. I look at the model for the search or the view in this case. We're actually search query. Using the same. I think it's let's have GPT if it's good. Does Django sanitize values and query strings via request I get? Yes, Django does automatically sanitize values obtained through request get to prevent security vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting. When you access the query string parameters via request get, Django returns them as instances of query dict classes. This class handles escaping characters that could be potentially dangerous in HTML contexts. Okay, very good. I was a bit um, overly cautious there and for good reason, but Django this is one of the reasons I'm using a framework like Django is because it has these pra practices and um, collective wisdom built into it uh, and it saves me from like really complex things that I'm not even aware of, that I'm barely aware of. Footcon's major security vulnerabilities. So, um, and it includes you know, you are encoding if you do need to manually do that. But I think this should be good then. I got the search query and uh, pagination should work. Let's try it out. So I'll go back to my little friendly search here. And I need to fix that. I'm test, test nothing. Um, um, that's probably because they're, all right, events, so pagination should be 10. Um, the search pagination should be one for a quick test, viewed. 
Oh, so I'm not using my little pagination helper here. I don't know if this is a if explicit else is necessary. If there aren't any results, I think it's going to be none. I think this will return any. Uh, okay, but uh, let me see. What am I doing here? Query add hit. Okay, I suppose I should record the query in any case, even though. Uh, oh no, 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 I see. I see. I'll return the search results in any case. I don't think this is necessary. My pagination, I like these named variables here. And we'll just do one per page for the moment. Refresh it, and our pagination is working next. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. So the Q equals test. HGN Q equals test or query equals test. So that, like, got passed in, but, uh, Pagenator. And we should uh, use the same, we'll have to use the same query, query string, uh, query string key or whatever that would be called across all of these apps. Okay, no problem. Pagination, paginator, current query string. Mm, yeah, that was the problem. So that's a bug, but I only have to fix it in one place. So long as I use the same Query model has been removed to the Wagtail Contrib search promotions. Please update your code to use the query model from that application. Okay, I can maybe fix that while I'm in this area. So we've got query is none, so that's that's correct. Now query is test. So if I go here, page two and test, and I need refresh, page two and query equals test. So that works. Page three, yes, preserving the query string. Oops, wrong button there. Ah, oh, come on. I don't know what I'm doing. So the other thing in our view. I think I've tried this. Wagtail contrib search promotion. I'll get one one deprecated. One deprecation notice. And we'll do 10 per page now. Back to our previous value. Okay, so we're getting closer. I need to make sure the library uses this in its context. Uh, okay, it's a bit different. It's using these facets. Ah, shoot. I see why I did that then, okay. Because it's supposed to grab the whole query string and why didn't that work before? Mm. In other words, it's supposed to grab everything here. I think this is what happened last time I tried to switch to this query. That's a new change. Okay. So current query string is the whole thing. 
I need to revert to this chain. I've tried it. Causes an error. Or or did it? Ah shoot. Maybe not. Alright. Did I not save it? No, let's save. Yeah, that one line change breaks things. Dang it. Alright, let me get my T and we'll continue. We're getting close, but I've encountered a bit of a snag. All right, cool. So the search query is here. I just refresh the page as we got it there in the query string. Now, if I introduce pagination, it should carry over this entire query string. Everything up to the question mark should be good to go. Ah, oh, darn, I didn't actually want to close that. It's all right. I'll leave it open. Then. So paginator HTML, I think is fine. It's the current query string, everything after the am percent. Now my search HTML, Includes the paginator with the query string. Ah, okay. Here's the the rub. Search query is only the keyword. So in order to do this, I can get the current query string out of the, while in the template or from the server. Let's see. I think it's just request get dictionary or something like that. So I have to have the context processor enabled, which we do. Get URL and code. All right, let's try that. Let's see if this works. Hey, scrolling. And that must make it safer. So here I need the URL and code. Can we just use that? Let's try it out. Thank you, ChatGPT, for making me a stronger developer. And I need to get this uh, pagination to have fewer results model. So where are we? Where are we here? Library. I'm not working with that currently. Search views pagination by number of items of one. Really quick, and then we'll refresh. Fresh. Here we go. Yeah. Here's the weird thing that starts to happen. It starts to compound. Our matey. So let me just look how I did this in the media library. Yeah. So what did I do in the library? Or more specifically, what should so I have a function here, and basically I'm passing in a context variable into the view, into the search view, and it's the wrong thing. The search query is the wrong thing for the what I'm trying to achieve. It's the right thing here, but the wrong thing here. I think just an f string should do it. This is hard to think about. Sorry, I'm a bit slow, but uh, ah, yeah, I won't work there. Oh, man, I'm getting tired. Okay, so the search query is used in the search bar. <laughs> so that we can't really change. No problem. But all I need to do is I just do that search query string, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, thank you, GPT, for making me a stronger developer. Gosh search query test and it's not compounding anymore good last good all right crisis averted i don't know that's a bit strong wording but uh yeah i'm gonna try to get this done get this done
All right, the other thing. So we're using the paginated search results and introduce a new context variable here, but that's okay. And this is also using common pagination. I like it. I like it. Oh, wait. I would say never. <clears throat> I, I always want it to prompt me there or not let me do that action. I have to explicitly stage my changes. There we go. All right, so I think there's only like one more. So we get paginated items there, get paginated items in our library. Library is working good. Magazine, get paginated items in the magazine. Paginate our archive issues and paginate it. That's the only way, place we're using them, I suppose. So in our template, then let's come to the corresponding template in the magazine. Let's see, library I'm closing, views and search I'm closing. Let's go back to these search results. Here we go. Magazine, what are we looking at? Deep archive index page. Deep archive index page. And we should have a paginator down here. Here it is. So, what do you know? Let's actually grab our library index page template and grab the paginator tag. And for this, we don't need to, we don't need that or any of this. And I'll create a couple of archive issues. Then we'll go back to the deep archive page. Refresh, we got two issues and pagination setting was here. I just like these, I like these named variables. Self-documenting, it's a, our items for page is fine. Refresh now. Okay, so now we're doing our pagination. So that's cool. Paginated archive issues. Ah, see I'm returning the page here, that's not correct. Then in the template I need to adjust it. So we're gonna grab the page of items and then pass in the paginator there refreshing that and looking good yeah it's got a little trailing ampersand ah it's okay it's a small detail that this is a big improvement overall and the main issue is that we should probably display i don't know another challenge we're going to face i just realized is that on our pagination we're using row oh no no this is just the paginator this is just a paginator our layout uses rows and columns i'm, I'm just not thinking correctly we define so if we want to display eight items at a time then i can i can configure that here and get that paginated items out it's never mind <laughs> it was beside the point because we do tweak the layout here the column and row count and need to be able to do that in situ or in the right context all right so there we go items for page 12. see i think in fact 12 is the right number here for some reason uh because i think we have four columns why is why three rows so yeah good thing i thought of that so we're using our and in fact it's a bit redundant to do this i think i can just i don't need this placeholder variable really Wink. and just do this yeah and look at all that code we removed multiple places where we just had inconsistencies potential bugs creeping up maybe you know security issues basically the more you do the same thing over and over the more times you have a chance you have for failure but if you have everything consolidated in one place then you can just scrutinize that one particular place and every time you pass over that it gets better i think you know in some way so i think we're in good shape here if I look at our other places where we're using pagination in the magazine, you know, we've got that paginated items and uh, if I go back to my original search, I should only really be using paginator in one place, aside from my tests. Ah. So I do a case sensitive search here. This is to assert that they are equal. And then here, here we go. Magazine index page, okay. So this is no longer necessary. And I think I can just get rid of all this. Get paginated items here.
items, items for page, page number. So if I come over here now and we go to the magazine page and I need to fix the template in magazine index page. And where we're trying to iterate, we're saying for issue and archive issues paid. There we go, recent archive. So what I'll do is add a child page. And this needs to be just a little bit older from, oh, let's just put it a few years ago or last year's one, publish. So now if I go, we need archive issue two. So I can test the uh, pagination. And we'll set that to 2021, but it doesn't really matter. Now we can view live. All right, so now we notice nothing is showing up. So we're just gonna find what's breaking down. So first, see all this pagination can go away, except I'll have to change this page number. Uh, that's the tricky, tricky part here. Page is one, and then I can use my, because we're not using pagination up here. Archive issues. All right, so now we'll just do a little bit of debugging here. I'll stop the server here and find out maybe my query is wrong. My query set is empty or breakpoint here. See if we're getting anything back. Archive issues are just the old issues. So basically, if I refresh now, we should hit this breakpoint and see we've got an empty query set. Okay. Ah, okay, yeah. So that's strange. My continue edit is page publication date should have been. Oh, I know what happened. I didn't pick a date, so it actually didn't uh, persist them. Alrighty then. Yeah, you have to actually it's a two part thing. I can't just set the year. All right, all right. Now we can view that live. And now we have archive issues. Very good. Continue. Yes. Yeah, this working is correct as expected. And let's just say one per page to see if we get the nice pagination widget. I can remove my breakpoint. It's not so much needed now. Yeah, there's our paginator. Okay, page one and page two. For the first page one. And we have the ampersand, but uh, I'm not gonna fuss over that too much. Yes. No, no, not that. Yep. Yeah, removing all this excessive code unnecessary typecasting and just in efficient but it's more a matter of uh, inconsistent duplicate copy paste with random variations wait did this work yeah because i changed it in both places apparently right here sir where is it page oh we're not using the query i'm so tired right now just gonna go for it hope i'm not introducing any bugs here yeah, I just changed it to page instead of archive issues page. Yeah, that's what I was checking. And it works. Page one, page two, last, previous, next, first. Yeah. Use common pagination. There we are. Some lint. Yeah, removing this paginator. I, I should only import this in one place in the project. If it's in any other files, then it's another place I need to clean up. So searching for paginator, remove this full paginator. Uh, so yeah, we'll clean that up. Yeah, that's my to-do, that's what I'm actually doing now, cool. Only one other place, looks like memorials. So let's finish this, memorials, templates, memorial index page. So we're going to iterate over each memorial in the query set. 
page and pagination down here is going to use the shared pagination where we get it from is here and the items are memorials and then the memorials just needs this oh, that's redundant go to memorials under community about us oh, okay so I have to specify the memorial meeting in order for it to work or make that safe oh yeah I'll just make it safe I think in most cases we're gonna have a memorial meeting but it's not a required field so there mm, I see I have a title and then this memorial meeting it's a bit tricky not the most beautiful all right that should allow us to view the memorials now community memorials okay so we got two memorials and we have an empty paginator but hey we're getting somewhere all right so we've got this the paginator is not working memorial one renders and since i didn't associate a meeting with it it didn't work there's some template cleanup we need to do uh but overall right now my task is just pagination uh, memorial index page so the paginator i didn't quite get that what happened i don't understand how this would work mm -hmm. no that's cool it should still work we filter separately and then we paginate but am i still in debug mode no apparently not I didn't hit my breakpoint there. Okay, memorial. So filtered memorials is a query set. That's expected. And memorials is paginated with a lighted page range. Um, I think this is because it's not hitting the pagination limit. There it is. All right, so then the other thing is I just don't need to wrap this. So we had an empty card. I don't need to wrap that in the empty card or list group item, whatever. That's fine. And whether or not we want it center is another thing, but the parent template determines the layout while the paginator is just responsible for the widget itself and the widget can fit into the constraints of the template. We can review those for consistency with the editor. Yeah, I think we're good to go. But for example, if we don't want a justified center, I can just do this and we're good to go. I think it looks a bit better centered though. So we'll have some remaining inconsistencies, but overall we've moved towards much more cohesive, consistent, and perhaps redu bug, <laughs> reduce uh, bug code. Fixed a couple bugs along the way. I think we're ready to roll. Publish that, open a pull request, and what we'll do is check the issues that we're closing in our backlog, current focus, unified pagination, search pagination. So we're gonna close in 825 and 934. About two hours. Create that pull request. Time tracking for open source work. Uh, thanks to my current employer, Wonderdog, we have a open source benefit where they'll pay us uh, for contributions to open source projects. So it's a nice benefit up to a certain amount per month. Uh, so I appreciate Wonderdog uh, for that opportunity, to, for the opportunity to support this uh, open source work for Western Friend. Wow, actually we went through a lot more uh, templates than I thought, but our whole project now is using a, a unified paginator. We've only got tests now and a pagination helper. So that's the only place we can port the Django paginator now. And a unified helper and then in specific tests where we need to um, basically compare the pagination result with the expectation. But on that note, let's run these tests real quick. And actually, they're probably already running here. 
If I go to my pull request, yeah, they are. There they are. Oh, Lord. Sometimes it's a bit faster to run the tests here than in CI. One thing we should notice is the lack of the deprecation notice, or, or not deprecation, but the um, query set sorting warning from the previous test that I sort of fixed. Uh-oh, we've got some errors though now. Oh, our results are in over here, but it's, it's more convenient here. But essentially, search no query and I did break some stuff. Darn it. All right, well, I'm going to take a quick break and then we'll fix these tests. Be right back. Okay, a few tests. Let's take a look. Test search no query. Well, if I reverse for the search, we should get response code with zero results, yeah. And it's getting five results, okay. That is something I noticed earlier. So it's gonna basically return the whole database. And uh, I see why, I see how I introduced that change. I remember now I actually um, thought it would return none, but it return if there were no queries, but it returns everything. Is that how it's designed to work? Okay. Now I remember, but now I learned. TIL, um, it's a search, view, okay. So if, the, if there is no query, all right, what was the specific change? If I look here, I think it was just none, but let me, page drop is none, all right. So I just basically need this. Right, so it's a, if we don't get a query, <laughs> it returns everything. It's a greedy search instead of a conservative search. Wow, good to know. So we can run this test for just the search. Those are good. All right, so what else do we get? Mm. So just my tests, I have to kind of Fix that. Yeah, 617. I hope I got them all. It's a bit clunky, the scrolling. It's not smooth, and I'm thinking I missed some. That one. Let's run them all again. Now I've lost track, but yeah. That's a failure. One equals two. So perhaps I left the um, memorials pagination. Yeah, to the wrong page number. That was easy mistake. I think ten is probably what we're after there because we're not displaying them in a grid. All right, one not equal to eight. Okay. Now, so I want to fix. I think a lot of these are duplicates. All right. So we're just gonna run the magazine tests next time. Expected archive issues per page. Eight is not equal to two. Hmm, here's the problem there. Ah, darn, what was that one? Hmm, gosh, a lot of these errors. Very cool. Okay, so our events page is returning extra results. Expected number per page, I guess. So let's see if the items for page is correct. And we expect 10, we're getting only three. We expected more. All right, so we've been to models. If I go to the paginated items, use it, darn it, I keep doing that. Down here, we have 10 per page. Okay, so this is strange. Hmm, could be the category. Let's see. Test get context pagination. Here we're not. Ah, uh, yeah, it has a, a default filter. Not sure. Now these are Western events. Dang it.
I'm wondering if this test is just incorrect. What I'm going to do is manually test this. And if I set this pagination in the events model to one for page. We do, in fact, get the correct. Pagination, so I think the test case is wrong at this point, I'm kind of just more inclined to delete it. It's sort of testing the Django paginator directly anyway, which I think is um, already pretty well tested. Granted, I'm tired, so I'm not thinking whoops, very well, but we'll run these tests one more time. I think we can, we're safe to push these changes now though, or to commit the changes fixed tests. Could be that the behavior of the uh, paginator in my context the template context changed and invalidated that test but i already have a unit test on the pagination widget and the common pagination code is under test as well i believe let's double check that test. oh actually yeah tests yeah so we have tests that it behaves correctly. That's another good thing is having this pagination spread across the app in so many places, behaving inconsistently meant my tests were a bit more brittle, um, but now I've got the code and everything centralized. So I think we're good to go. Fix tests, commit, synchronize changes. So yeah, this has been actually a pretty good session. Pretty lengthy sessions, almost, uh, well, it's a little after 1.30 in the morning. This has been another live code hangout. We've been working on the Western Friend project. If you'd like to check the changes we made today, working on Django pagination, it's pull request number 952. We removed more lines than we added, but we did need to move some things around and modify some tests. We've got a some green lines here. Primarily, we've been focusing on removing duplicate pagination logic that was spread out throughout our application and consolidating that to a single unified helper function that takes arguments from the context. We have different pagination parameters depending on where which items we're paginating. Sometimes we want eight per page, sometimes 10. Uh, so essentially, it's just, and then the HTML was also moved to a shared template. So we had several inconsistencies here, either using different um, parameters or button classes, sometimes layout was different. Uh, so all of that's changed and then just modified our tests to deal with the new pagination context we had shifted. Um, we were no longer passing the page directly to the templates, we were passing the paginator to the templates so that it could be passed into the paginator markup. And removed, a, I believe, a flaky test. Um, I've already got this pagination test more or less covered in the pagination app here. And you can see an example here, We're removing all these lines of code down to a single unified paginator. So it's really good. Same thing, removing a lot of pagination logic, could have been buggy or have different behavior than other places and even doing unnecessary steps. And we have just one shared unified function. So that's it. It's pretty much the same thing over and over. Here's the 50 lines of pagination template if you're interested in having pagination on your own site and might be using the Bootstrap 5 framework, then you can just copy and paste ours. If you'd like to check out this project, you can stop by github.com slash westernfriend and we're in the WF website project, which I might rename soon. We have a lot of issues here that are labeled good first issues. They're usually small items that you can kind of just 
try out and then um, get a feel for how our project works and perhaps if you're wanting to learn Python and Django and get some open source contributions under your belt, these are a great place to start. Actually, this um, I just did as well. Closes 949. Let me double check that I was able to do that. Do a case sensitive search for query. Okay. There it is. Uh, no, that's not it. Darn it. Let me just see if I can do that here. Promotions. I think I did that. Where is it? Having a hard time seeing it. Some guy collapsed, maybe. Hmm. Let me just look in our editor. Darn it. Close the editor. Oh, here it is. Okay, let's just take it. Real quick. Hmm. Yeah, I did try it and I get this error. All right, so I did try it. Didn't work. I'll unassign myself. Wrong button. All right, a bit of an aside. But nonetheless, that means I can't. I need to remove that from the conversation. And I can merge this change set. Okay, this has been another open source live code hangout. Thanks for stopping by. On Sepster, uh, it was nice chatting. It's always nice to have somebody to hang out. And thanks for the subscribe. Okay, I hope you're doing well and have a great day.